Today we're looking at President James Buchanan. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. James Buchanan was the 15th President of the United States from 1857 to 1861 and was a member of the Democratic Party. Buchanan's presidency directly preceded the Civil War, and unfortunately, his policies and actions as president, many argue, greatly contributed to the war beginning. Many historians and scholars have ranked him as one of the worst presidents in U.S. history. Buchanan was born April 23, 1791, in Cove Gap, Pennsylvania. He was the second oldest of 11 children born to James Buchanan Sr. and Elizabeth Spear. His father was a successful merchant, and his mother Elizabeth ensured that their children received a good education. Buchanan attended Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and graduated in 1809. After graduation, he moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which would truly be his lifelong home, where he became an apprentice in a law office and by 1812 had become a lawyer himself. When the British invaded Maryland in 1814 during the War of 1812, he quickly volunteered to serve in the Pennsylvania militia, but never saw any action in combat. Shortly after, he began his political career as he was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives in 1814 as a Federalist. Over the next few years, Buchanan continued to serve in the state government and at the same time built up a very successful law practice in Lancaster. In 1820, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives, where he would serve for the next 10 years. During this time, the Federalist Party was fading away as the country was experiencing the era of good feelings. Buchanan began to avidly support Andrew Jackson. After the election of 1824, he was instrumental in gathering support for Jackson and forming the new Democratic Party. After Jackson was elected president in 1828, Buchanan was appointed U.S. ambassador to Russia. In 1834, he was elected to the United States Senate, where he was in office until 1845. During his time in Congress, Buchanan consistently supported states' rights and argued that the major issue of the day, slavery, was a state matter and not something for the federal government to interfere in. He was a strong advocate for manifest destiny and expanding the United States West. From 1845 to 1849, he served as Secretary of State under President James K. Polk and was a strong supporter of going to war with Mexico and annexing more territory to the United States. In 1853, under President Franklin Pierce, he was appointed ambassador to the United Kingdom. As the election of 1856 approached, it was clear current President Franklin Pierce had fallen out of favor after signing the Kansas-Nebraska Act into law, which had led to problems in Kansas. At the 1856 Democratic National Convention held in Cincinnati, Ohio, Buchanan won the nomination to run for president, beating out Franklin Pierce and Stephen Douglas. Buchanan was seen as a candidate that appealed to both North and South, as he was from the North yet agreed with states' rights. John C. Breckinridge of Kentucky was chosen to be Buchanan's vice presidential running mate. In the general election, Buchanan faced Republican John C. Fremont and former President Millard Fillmore running for the American Party or Know Nothing Party. Buchanan easily won the Electoral College with 174 votes and received 45% of the popular vote. On March 4, 1857, he was sworn in as the 15th President of the United States, and at the outset of his term, he said he would only serve one term in office. Now, you may have noticed I, I never mentioned Buchanan marrying or having children. Actually, he is the only U.S. president who never got married. His niece, Harriet Rebecca Lane Johnston, served as First Lady and hosted events at the White House. As president on the pressing issue of the day, the expansion of slavery into new territories, Buchanan declared support for popular sovereignty or allowing settlers in new territories to decide if slavery would expand there. As he was inaugurated, the U.S. Supreme Court was about to decide the Dred Scott case, which Buchanan felt would settle the issue once and for all. 
When the court decided to defend slavery, it only served to create greater division between the North and the South. When violence erupted in bleeding Kansas, Buchanan supported allowing Kansas to enter the Union as a slave state, but it would remain a territory until 1861. As the nation began to clearly break apart and Buchanan's own Democratic Party split into Northern and Southern factions, Buchanan took little action. When states began to threaten to secede from the Union, Buchanan said there was little the U.S. government could do to stop them. President Buchanan kept his word and did not seek re-election, as Abraham Lincoln won the election of 1860 and was sworn in in March of 1861. Shortly after he left office and returned to Pennsylvania, the Civil War began, and many blamed Buchanan for being a key figure in starting it. He was vilified by the press and received threatening letters calling him a traitor. He adamantly argued against these attacks and was a strong supporter of the Union effort. A few years after the war ended, James Buchanan died on June 1, 1868 from respiratory failure. He was 77 years old. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.